This is a new episode of the series where we're showing you the most interesting vehicles of each nation. Today, we'll be talking about Germany. The Luftwaffe considered their aircraft a kind of flying artillery, one of the integral parts of the Blitzkrieg and a handy tool for ground support. That's why they prioritized giving their aircraft a considerable bomb load over designing lots of different fighter types. At the very first rank, you already have access to the HS-123A-1 biplane, and that can carry a 250-kilogram bomb. This is a great opportunity to master all the basic bombing techniques. At BR-1.3, you don't have to be extra precise. There simply aren't any heavily armored enemies. Not to mention that on the biplane, like this, it's pretty easy to get out of a dive really close to the ground. Another notable dive bomber available here is the Junkers 87B2 Stuka. It's not a biplane, meaning that it's faster. And it has access to a heavier bomb. 500 kilograms is no joke. The plane sits at a slightly higher BR, 1.7, but its opponents are still pretty squishy. Fun fact, the aircraft comes with a set of wailing sirens mounted on its gear legs. The wailing starts at around 400 kph, striking fear into the hearts of your enemies, and also allowing you to control your speed without looking at any indicators. That's not the only Rank 1 Stuka, by the way. There's also the R2 variant that can carry a 1,000 kilogram bomb. That's more than enough to deal with even the most heavily armored targets in the game. The Junkers 88A4 is an even more advanced Rank 1 aircraft for all the bombing enthusiasts out there. It has lots of payload options and a max bomb load of 2,000 kilograms. On the other hand, an aircraft of this size can be considerably more challenging to fly. All of that doesn't mean that there aren't any interesting Rank 1 fighter aircraft. Take a look at the Junkers 88C6, based on the Junkers 88A series. It comes with lots of firepower. You get three 7.92mm machine guns and three 20mm MGFFM cannons. By the way, the M in that name means that a cannon like that can fire Minengeschoss rounds, shells with explosive filler that are very effective against bombers and strike aircraft. The HE-112A-0 is a more conventional fighter. It is armed with a very powerful nose-mounted MGC-30L cannon, originally used in the AA capacity on the ground. Coming from this gun, even a couple of hits with HE shells will bring down almost any fighter aircraft, and the AP belt will allow you to make short work of ground targets. The only problem here is limited ammunition supply. You can only bring, ta -da, 100 rounds. Say hi to the HE-100D-1, the fastest fighter at its BR. That's not surprising given that it's built almost like a racing aircraft. It even established a world speed record. All in all, even despite its relatively weak armaments, in the form of a three rifle caliber machine guns, this fighter is an excellent pick for experienced pilots thanks to its superior flight performance. Then comes the legend of the Battle of Britain, the Emil or the BF-109E. Due to its amazing agility, high speed and good rate of climb, it can take on any kind of opposition. The most interesting variations of the aircraft available to us here are the E-4 and the premium E-7U-2. It's pretty simple. They are armed with MGFMM cannons that are very effective in combat. That's just the beginning though, as there's a whole other iconic series waiting for us at rank 2. The aircraft of the Fokker Wolf 190 family. These are all about superior firepower. For instance, the FW190A4 
comes with four 20mm cannons that can deal with most enemies with the shortest of bursts. Furthermore, aircraft of this series tend to be on the tougher side, making them great picks for head-on engagements. If you fancy strike aircraft, look no further than these three variations of the BF-110, the C-7, the F-2, and the G-2, each with its own set of payload options, giving you access to bombs, 210mm rockets, and also additional 20mm or even 37mm cannons. Then there is the special case of the BV-238 bomber. It's the only six-engine aircraft in the game. It's also known for its good defensive armaments, a decent bomb load, sturdy construction, and the ability to land on water. The third era gives us new variations of the excellent BF-109, F-4, and the G-2. Their extremely high rate of climb means that you are almost guaranteed to secure that altitude advantage, setting up the stage for a decisive dive. The aircraft also has a lot of stopping power with a vast array of primary and secondary guns. The Focke Wolf 190A 5U-12 is more of a flying gun rack than a regular fighter. If you count suspended armaments, it can be equipped with up to six 20mm MG-151 cannons. There's a hefty price to pay for that, though. This aircraft is rather slow and not very maneuverable. The TA-154A-1 is a great twin-engine interceptor armed with two 20mm and two 30mm cannons. Furthermore, in air battles, it spawns right in the air, making it easier to keep up with enemies while climbing, and allowing you to make full use of its powerful armaments. The twin-engined ME-410 is also listed as a fighter, but performs much better when used for ground support. Depending on the model, it can carry either two 500 kilogram bombs or four 210 mm rockets. The HS 129B2, armed with a 30 mm or a 37 mm cannon, and the HS 129B3, equipped with a 75 mm gun, are pure blood strike aircraft. Be careful though. Their engines are outputting barely enough power to keep them flying, with your speed capabilities also limited by the massive recoil of your guns. All of that means that most of the time, you will be dangerously close to stalling. This bird is certainly not easy to fly. In the hands of an experienced pilot, though, they are the bane of tankers everywhere. If you liked the HS-129, or any aircraft capable of dealing with ground targets with its guns, for that matter, you're in for a treat. Take a look at the twin-engine Messerschmitt 410B 6R3, armed with two Mark 103 cannons. It has access to a belt with sub-caliber rounds that are very effective against ground targets, and is a good enough flyer to make every hunt very enjoyable. The Focke Wolf 190 F8 is a strike variation of the legendary Focke Wolf 190. Its payload options consist of a variety of bombs, including a 1000 kg one, rockets, and 30 mm cannons. There is a configuration for literally any occasion and it handles pretty much just as well as the fighter it's based on. If you prefer bombers, it's worth taking a gander at the HE-177A-5 that has access to the unique Fritz X guided bombs and can carry three of them. Another interesting pick in this category is the Junkers 288C. It's really hard to chase thanks to its considerable speed 
And if you manage to catch up with it, uh, get ready to endure the fire coming from a 20 millimeter tail turret. If we're talking fighters, then the fourth era gives us at least two interesting options. The BF-109K-4 is the latest variation of the BF-109 currently available in the game. It's a typical German fighter aircraft with an amazing rate of climb and lots of firepower. On the other hand, you get no bombs to play with, giving it limited effectiveness in mixed battles. The second fighter, or more precisely, a high-altitude interceptor, that we suggest that you should try out is the TA-152H1. Compared to the final production version of the BF-109 that we just looked at, it is faster and more agile, partially thanks to its bigger wing and nice flaps. It also has excellent offensive capabilities. We made it to the fifth era. The first aircraft that we're going to look at here is the ME-163, powered by a very powerful rocket engine. Around its BR, precious few planes can outrun or outclimb this little bird, but your fuel supply lasts only six minutes. Got to be real quick with everything you do and save some fuel to be able to return to the airfield. Then there is the famous Schwalbe, the ME-262A-1A. Gameplay-wise, it's a quintessential early jet, coming with engines that aren't yet powerful enough to establish any speed records. At the same time, it is outfitted with four 30mm Mark 108 cannons that work wonders against big targets like bombers. But using them to hit fighters can be a challenge, due to the noticeable increase in their speed all across the board. It's worth noting that the Schwalbe's speed problem is solved by two of its options, the C1A and the C2B. The former is equipped with a single rocket booster, and the latter has two, temporarily giving them a lot of power that can be used for a fast climb or a lightning-quick attack. The A1U4 variation is fitted with a very precise 50mm cannon that can use good shells with explosive filler that penetrate more than 60 millimeters of steel at 1,000 meters. That means that you can reliably pen most tanks through their roofs. The last Messerschmitt 262 model on our list is called the Sturmvogel. It can carry two 250 kilograms or a single 500 kilogram bomb and when used without any suspended armaments plays a very effective light fighter aircraft. Another good aircraft for mixed battles are the planes of the AR-234 family. These are fast jet bombers that can carry up to 1,500 kilograms of bombs. Okay, it's time to discuss two apex predators of the German tech tree. The CL-13B Mark VI is a Canadian Sabre variation that was used by West Germany. Compared to this classic American F-86, this model outputs more thrust, resulting in a better performance overall. Six Brownings probably won't scare anyone at this point, but this fighter can also use air-to-air -air missiles to engage targets at ranges where machine guns aren't effective anyway. You also get a couple of 1,000-pound bombs that are very handy in mixed battles. The last aircraft that we're going to discuss in this video is the German MiG-19S. Unlike its Soviet counterpart, it doesn't have a radar station nor air-to-air -air missiles. On the other hand, it's equipped with an additional 30mm gun. Performance-wise, <laughs> what can we say? It's a pure blood MiG, a fast modern fighter aircraft ready to engage any kind of enemy. 
Okay, guys, that's it for today. What German aircraft are your go-tos? Please do tell us in the comments below.